I'm Sam. And I'm Greg. We're, We're human, human beings. beings. And, and we, we like, like movies. movies. We'll be doing reviews of brand new releases. Old classics. Entire sagas. And even TV shows and video games. This, this is Reaction Time. Time. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 20th episode. <laughs> We're at 20. We're at 20. Yay. We just had a party. Not yes. really. but There was no pizza involved or Dude, music, why? but there was dancing. Why don't we have a cake? Why don't we just like, we should just have a cake next Let's to us do at cake. all times. And always just change the number of what episode it is so we can <laughs> celebrate. Candle. We'll, we'll have our 25th anniversary on episode 25. Okay. We'll do, this is the 25th episode anniversary. This is the 20th, in, yeah. In five episodes, whatever it is. We'll have a little, we'll have a little cake. Maybe that'll be my favorite movie. Great. We'll be the 25th. That sounds perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, how are you doing today, Sam? I am well. Yeah. How are you? I'm fantastic. Great. As always. Yeah. Today, we are going to be talking about 10 Cloverfield Lane. Yes, which is a somewhat, in a way, a sequel to Cloverfield, but at the same time, it absolutely is not. No, not even a little bit. It doesn't have a look to do with the first movie. There is one thing that it has to do with the first movie that I will get into in spoilers. But it's super minor. You'll have minor. to explain to me it's what it minor. even is. It's super minor. Okay. Yeah, it's nothing crazy. Um, May I remind everybody that I did not like the first Cloverfield movie. No, you hated the first Cloverfield. And I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> I really freaking like this movie. It was a good this movie. This was a good movie. <laughs> this is a great movie. John Goodman, I think my so favorite good. movie he's ever been in. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, this movie is a, I would call it a thriller. Yeah. Like almost the whole thing is thriller. Yeah. With a couple little other genres mixed in, but like yeah. almost completely thriller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a very. It, it would be a very fun like Halloween movie. Mm-hmm. I think like mm-hmm. if you're just trying to get in the spirit of it Halloween, just, it's a good movie to watch every once in a while. Oh, man, it really is. It's so good. Very good. If you want to get your heart rate up, this is the movie for you. Oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. So. What did you? I made Sam watch the trailer. And we're gonna so, go spoiler free here first. Yeah, this is spoiler yeah, free. So no worries. So, like Cloverfield, Ten Cloverfield Lane just dropped on. I think it was Transformers Three, the midnight premiere of Transformers Three. Nobody knew it existed. We hadn't heard anything about Cloverfield. I mean, it'd been like six years or something. Dude, eight years. I probably watched this trailer in theaters then because I went and saw Transformers Three yeah, in you, theaters. You probably did. That's when it dropped. I remember who I went with. If you guys are listening, I went with Kix Conger, who I don't think I have seen since then, and Taylor Anderson. If y'all are listening, hi. They're friends. Hey, look, from, they were friends baby. from when I was like, I was like a baby, like a tiny little child, and nice. then I saw them again later in life. That was like probably two thousand and wait. When did this movie come out? Uh, twenty sixteen. This no. I thought the most recent one came out twenty sixteen. Was it? Is this twenty twelve? Oh man. I don't know because I feel like, yeah, it would have been 2011, I think, that I would have seen it. Yeah, I guess whenever Transformers 3 came out. 10. Yeah, you got to look it up because I'm not sure. Are you sure it wasn't? No. This was 2016, 2016. so it would not have been in front of Transformers 3. Are you sure? Transformers 3 was. No, maybe you're right. Because there's only been. Maybe it's Transformers 2 I went and saw. There's only been like seven more Transformers since then. Is that Age of Extinction? No, that's Dark of the Moon. So the last night. Transformers Dark of the Moon is the third one. Let's see. The first no, the first Transformers is 2007. Okay. The second Transformers is 2009. Okay. The third Transformers is 2011. And then the fourth was 14, fifth was 17. Okay. Maybe I'm so was Ten Cloverfield Lane 2016? Yes. Okay, I'm insane then. I don't know what movie this came out with, but it was a midnight premiere of something. I thought it was Transformers. Yeah, well, it probably definitely wasn't. No. <laughs> But now I'm like, yeah, what would it have Midnight been? Midnight premiere five years after the movie Preview. finally comes out. Huh, weird. I don't know now. I just remember I went to a midnight premiere and this played, the trailer did, and I was like, you didn't know what it was. And then at the very end, it said 10 Cloverfield Lane and I about- Booped yourself? Yeah, pretty much. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm going to be able to find it. Okay. What did you think of the trailer? I was just confused afterwards. I think it's one of my favorite trailers. I love the music and how it distorts the further along it goes. And it shows you like nothing. And it's great. Yeah. I was like, but- why Why is this happening? <laughs> what is happening? 13 hours? 
Mm, no. Audiences were taken aback when they were suddenly watching a mysterious teaser for 10 Cloverfield Lane playing before 13 hours. Oh. But you haven't seen that movie? No, I've seen that movie, but I didn't see it at midnight. Maybe I read about it and then I watched it. Yeah, The 13 Hours, The Secret Soldiers of Benghazi. Mm. That was the one. Okay. That was a good movie. Another Michael Bay. That's why I'm probably getting it confused because they're both Mm. Michael Bay movies. Yeah. Anyways. Anyways, after that little history lesson, (laughs) that little deep dive. What would you give this out of 10? 9.4. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give it nine and a half. Yeah. That makes sense. It was... Way better than Cloverfield. <laughs> way better than Cloverfield. <laughs> way, 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 way better. Okay. So, do you have any yeah. unspoiler, unspoilery things to say about it? No, other than go see it. Yeah. Go to yeah. your local movie theater and you won't find it. So, go to your local <laughs> uh, blockbuster and rent it. <laughs> your Hollywood video. <laughs> Hollywood video. Go to your Showtime. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot. It, Basically, it's all spoilers the whole time, so yeah. we can't say much else except for that. It's it's really good. It's very suspenseful and very good. Yeah. So okay. Um. So if you're gonna leave right now and go watch the movie, please subscribe to our podcast. Yeah. Please go ahead and like subscribe, subscribe. So yeah. there's a Patreon link. There's a just a regular Spotify old, like link. Spotify website link that allows you to subscribe for a certain paid amount of money. And if you do that, you get to pick a movie or a show for us to watch yep. and review and we'll do it. And we've done it already and we'll do it again. Yep. And plus you can do it for the low low cost of 99 cents or more per month. And that's no money. Inflation, are you kidding? 99 oh, yeah. cents is like two cents. Yeah. So you're giving us two cents. Yeah. Find really. us on YouTube. Yeah. Find us on Instawim. TikTok. Ting Tong. Ting Tong. <laughs> Go find us on Twitter. <laughs> Shut up. We don't have a Twitter. We don't have a Twitter, but if we did, it'd be Am I lit. supposed to make a Twitter now? I don't know. It could be fun. Okay. I'll I make a know. Twitter. But yeah, click on all the links yeah, in the show, on notes. the show notes. It'll be fun. Yeah. And I can actually feed my kids now. So if you subscribe. Yeah. Yeah. Craig. They're yeah, still starting. They're, you should see them. They're okay. skinny. I, I will make a bet with you. If you can answer this question, you don't have to subscribe. Me or the no, listeners? No, no, the listeners. Okay. You that are listening, if you can answer this question, you don't have to subscribe. Write a comment about what the answer is. But if you don't know the answer, then you have to subscribe. And that question is, are there more doors or wheels in the world? So that's it. <laughs> <laughs> if you know the answer. And you have to know. Not only do you know how, yeah, not only do you have, you have to, to know. You have to give us the exact amount yeah, of doors so you don't and have wheels. To know which is more? You have to know the exact number of which one is more. So there we go. <sighs> Let's jump on into spoilers. Okay. Okay. So get on out of here if you want to go watch the movie. It's a fun, um, if you're trying to get cuddled, watch this movie yeah, with, you're with to get a, a member of whatever your sex of preference is and <laughs> get real close to them because they will want to be held during this movie. Or maybe they'll want you to stay very far away from them. It depends on how they feel about the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, maybe the date won't go very well if you show them this movie. Yeah, it really depends. So, okay, we're going to we're going to spoil it up now. Yeah. Okay. Is there anything you want to talk about first off? Can I just can we just start with the car crash at the beginning? Dude. dude? Okay. <laughs> Cinematic the, masterpiece to like the, cut the to greatest the, opening of all time. It's incredible. It's dude. incredible. So she's driving and like the Car crashes and I like flinched, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. And then boom, it just cuts. Yeah. Silence, just a name. Yep. And then it goes back to the car crashing yep. and then cuts JJ Abrams. <laughs> and then it goes back to the car crashing. I don't know so why, good. but it's so good. It's so good. It's just like so, it's shocking is yeah. what it is. And it, oh, I saw that ugh. in theaters and oh my goodness. Dude. That was so, oh, it was beautiful. It's just ugh, little details I love. Okay, I have a question for you. Okay. Do you know the actor that was on the phone call? No. Ben, you know? Ben. Ben, the one that was calling her, who was saying, like, come back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Ben. That was Bradley Cooper. Was it really? 100%. Why? So Bradley Cooper and J.J. Abrams have, like, this really good relationship because he was in a lot of his older stuff. Oh, interesting. Um, and so, yeah, he he just basically was like, hey, can you come do this for me? That's so fun. I love when major actors uh-huh. take super minor roles. <laughs> it's so funny. Channing Tatum does that all the time. Oh, yeah. I respect him for it. Or oh, like so Brad Pitt know. and Deadpool 2. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For the two second clip. <laughs> yep. So anyways, that's Bradley Cooper. That's, that's on the so phone. Funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I just was on the edge of my seat the whole time. The other thing I'll tell you is, um, let me see this. Uh, so the, there's a twist mm-hmm. that comes halfway through the movie. Mm-hmm. And 
then the twist gets twisted mm-hmm. later in the movie. So it's a double twist. Mm-hmm. Might as well be a churro at that <laughs> point. And I, I wrote down my prediction after the first twist. So my prediction after you find out that he's holding them in there mm-hmm. because of the air, mm-hmm. right? Wait, what's the twist I'm thinking of? Yeah, I was going to say. So the first twist is that he's. Well, that he is holding them there because the air is not breathable. Is the first twist that I'm thinking of that he crashed the car into her? Oh. No. no. The first twist I'm thinking of is when, so kind of the whole movie you think he's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she runs up to the door and there's the lady there. And you're like, oh, so he was right. Yeah. Okay. So then I started thinking about it and I wrote down my prediction that I was like, okay, actually what this is, is it's an elaborate scheme by him. And he, this lady out there is a paid actor or a friend or whatever. Oh, really? So that was my prediction was like, okay, all of this is just going to be, he's just doing this to kidnap people. Oh, okay. So he had her, you know, get all makeup and just be like, oh my gosh, let me in, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then just like fall over dead or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I was pretty positive I was right too. I was like, dude, for <laughs> sure I'm right. I was wrong. You were wrong. <laughs> he was right. <laughs> he was mostly right. Yeah. And Wow. <laughs> And then the twist of at the end that it's freaking aliens, bro. It's just like, what? I, can Did I you just, like that twist? One other thing, I love that it was aliens, but okay. at the very end. Yes, yes. For some reason, that just works so well for me. It was super, some people hated it. Because they were like, what was the point of that? That was so dumb. But I loved, I loved it. Because the whole yeah. movie is this really self-contained kidnappy story. Yeah. And you're trying to figure out what exactly is happening. Because you mm-hmm. don't really know if he's telling the truth or yeah. what. Because then he's like, I crashed your car. I crashed in your car. And you're like, oh, okay, maybe he is so good like, then. But what's so weird to me about that is like, so yeah, I guess he was like protecting her. But at the same time, it's like, he's so kidnappy about it. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, he's a, he's a bad weird, person, he's a but he's like kind of being good, but he's like bad about it. Yeah. <laughs> but then what was the whole thing with the chick who was dead? The one they like found her necklace or her uh, Emma? She was, she was just a person that he had kidnapped. So he was kidnapping people prior. I don't know if he was think. kidnapping like multiple people, but he had kidnapped. He had somebody. at least kidnapped one girl. So it's just the and plot. It was simple, but at the same time, so like there were so many moving parts, and it was each character, or not every character. I guess John Goodman's character was like yeah. very complex. Oh, like you couldn't exactly figure out like no. what was going on. Like basically, the entire movie. Yeah, and I love that. So anyway, I loved this movie. It was so good. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it was so cool. It was so cool. Uh, okay, so mm. anyways, yeah. do you have anything you want to um, talk about? No, other than we can just kind of get started. Yeah, let's get started on visuals. Okay. Um, yeah, my first thing is the car crash. I I remember seeing that in theaters and I just, from the very like two minutes, my heart was beating like crazy. Yeah. And it's just yeah. cut so well how it does that. Um, I really like when... I don't know why when he's giving the tour mm-hmm. and it's just panning around and it just you just see him just standing there talking but like yeah. looking away. I don't know why I like that, but for mm. some reason just like showing him just like and focused on him for a second just giving the tour just it looked really weird and kind of cool because normally somebody's giving a tour you just you don't really like see them talking you just see mm-hmm. like the back of their head or something so it was really weird I don't know why but for some reason I'm like the shot's just weird but yeah. it's cool I like yeah. it yeah man what would you give the visuals okay so uh, <laughs> visuals um, so yeah car crash incredible awesome. um, the at the end the shots like kind of inside of her helmet or like pointing into her helmet. Like uh-huh. the really, really up close shots are so intense. They're so intense. So And you got like the good. freaking like moisture, yes. like everything oh, on there. So, oh yeah. So good. <laughs> um, and then the final, like the final, final shot I thought was really cool where she turns towards Boston mm-hmm. or some something. And then the lightning flashes and you see uh-huh. all the giant the spaceships in the sky. Yeah, dude, that's so cool. Oh, that's so cool. That's so and great. then other than that, everything was very minor on visual effects. But yeah. like set design was really good. Yeah. Um, His face after he gets hit with the acid. Yeah. Was a little off. Yeah, and it was burning the wrong spot. But because he was laying yeah. face down, and then he went up to them, and it was just like one side of his face was burned, <laughs> and I was like, okay, whatever. Like I just looked past it. Yeah. Um, the fire so looked cool. fine. Fire looked good. So the aliens looked pretty yeah. good. Yeah. You know, not horrible. No. So I mean, it was. It was pretty decent. I mean, I'll, I'd give it like a 188. Yeah. 
So yeah, I give it a one ninety. Okay. So yeah, my <laughs> my uh, me and my wife always joke about the aliens. They look like little buttholes. Yes, a <laughs> thousand like percent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They look like little anal fissures, bro. <laughs> just like poking out of you. Which is really weird. I don't know why they look like that, but I yeah. mean, you know, it's something different. Um, so some notes I have for visuals. I love the duck curtain, the shower curtain. Yeah. I think it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, when they're doing the stuff of them, like playing all the different things, like games and like puzzle pieces and the puzzles. Yeah. I love when he <laughs> tries to bang the puzzle piece oh, yeah. into it. Like that's, that's every guy in a puzzle right there. Yeah. Um, I want to watch the movie Cannibal Planes that they're watching. Oh yeah. I don't know if that's even a real thing, but like it sounds legit. I about the movie they're watching. Yeah. <laughs> Cannibal that's Planes. That's so funny. Um, oh, when they're making the sandwich, have you ever had a peanut butter and marshmallow fluff sandwich. I have. I I grew up on those. It's so when they're making those, slaps, dude. it's amazing. It's so good. My wife thinks I'm insane. <laughs> Why? Because she doesn't. She thinks it's not that good. <laughs> marshmallow fluff is one of the best foods on yeah. earth. Yeah, hands down. Well, she likes marshmallow fluff. It's when it's peanut butter and fluff. So. Marshmallow fluff, peanut butter, and banana is oh banana. So good. Mm. It's so good. Or oh, peanut butter, banana, and honey sandwich. Oh. On like a really crappy piece of white bread, like a really cheap piece of white bread that's like really smushy. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. I have to try that. Yeah. <laughs> or a ham and mayo sandwich with Cool Ranch Doritos in it right after you swim. Delicious. <laughs> it has to be right after there you swim. There are certain things that you have to eat at certain moments in your life. Okay. So, And a lot of times after swimming, dude, is like that's when a sandwich is going to hit and it's going to hit hard because you're a little sunburnt and it just feels good. <laughs> See, I will say that after hiking... A sandwich is yes. beautiful. Also correct. Because for some reason, the sandwich has warmed up just a little bit being in your backpack. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's like the perfect yeah. flavor and texture. Unless it's too hot and then yeah. you're scared. Yeah, that's, that yeah, mayo, yeah. Maybe the mayo. Yeah, it it's like in, a, in the office when Michael brings the, the potato salad or is it the, yeah, potato salad to um, whatever's Michael, Mike, what's, it, Mark, what's his name? Who? David Wallace's party. Oh. And he's like, I wouldn't eat that. Sitting on my dash for about six hours. <laughs> Hot sun beating down on the mayonnaise. It's just windy. It's so funny. Okay, what else you got? Uh, um, the unfinished puzzle. Horrible. Yeah, terrible, terrible, terrible. So terrible. Um, John Goodman, when he's dancing and twerking and does his little like mm-hmm. step down the steps thing. Oh my so gosh, weird. this is so freaking funny. Yeah. Um, let's see. I guess a lot of my other stuff has to do with. Our good friend Emmett and his unfortunate, yeah, timely dude. That my goodness, just shoots him right in the face, point blank. That I never expected that to happen. No, I really thought he was just gonna put him in the acid or something, or, or even just when he said, "I accept your apology." I just thought it was gonna be like maybe he would tie him up or something. Yeah, but oh my God. nope, oh, dude. It was bad. That's one of the, that's like probably one of my favorite scenes. Um, I didn't realize that right after she's, when he comes and talks to her, she's sitting where he slept. Um, Mm -hmm. How he shaves after he kills Emmett. Yeah. Dude, so creepy. That's really, it was really creepy. (laughs) Um, Let's see. I love the mailbox at the very end that says 10 Cloverfield on it. Mm -hmm. The ending lightning shot. And then I just love the, when, when she's outside and the aliens and it's grabbed the car. Yeah. And the windshield wipers are going. Yeah. It's just it's like, a random choice, but it's a random it's thing. Fun. But it just like helps get it a little bit more focused and yeah. vision is really cool. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Yeah. This is a great movie. This is a great movie. <laughs> okay. Story. Yeah. What are your thoughts on story? I mean, geez, it was great. Like so, so, so good. I do have one note that I'm curious about. It just says Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Somebody says. Oh yeah, Santa when Claus. they're doing the, um, I don't know what the game's called, but they have to guess what it is. And John yeah, Goodman's like, yeah, yeah, I yeah. know what you're up to. Oh. I know what you've been doing. Yes, it was that. Oh my gosh, that, that's what it was. I was freaking <laughs> out, dude. I was like on the edge of my seat. He's like, I've been watching you, and I know what you're I know up what to. You're uh, up to and all this stuff. <laughs> and like the one guy's definitely about to like. <laughs> break and like tell him everything that's happening. She's like, you're Santa Claus. He's like, yep, I'm Santa Claus. I'm like, oh, dude. That was f- so freaky. 
that whole that whole scene and the whole table scene, the first one when they're yeah. eating the spaghetti. Yeah, like oh, and Man. John Goodman, he is so He's good, so good, so good in this movie. He's so so good. Oh. Man, the story was like almost. It, it was like near perfect with some stuff that was like like slightly iffy. Yeah. Well, I can't even like think of any specifics. I know there was some stuff that I was like, eh, okay, whatever. So the Molotov cocktail. I mean, yeah. If that's what it takes to destroy these guys, how are they invading the entire like planet? She's got a really good throw too. Yeah. So it's just like a really minor stuff, but like nothing that destroys the movie. And I would say the entire scene in the house, or the not the scene, the entire you know, portion of the movie that's in the house, which is probably 90% of the movie, mm-hmm. is so good. It's so good. Like through and through is really good. I'm going to probably give this a 190, probably 196. Okay. Like high. Yeah. I think I'd give it a 199. Really? Yeah. I mean, all those stuff that's is so minor. Honestly fair. To me, but it's still in there. Mm-hmm. But there's just so many beats that are just so perfect and I love the ending. And so it's like- yeah, you know the the once the aliens come, that whole scene's a little fast. Yeah, it's quick, and she's just all of a sudden mm-hmm. is like this crazy badass that can just like yeah kill aliens, you yeah. know. But it was also really cool. <laughs> what I think was so what what was fun to like realize later was when the creepy lady runs up to the door and wants in. Mm-hmm. She's like, it barely touched me. It barely touched me. And I thought she was talking about the air. She was talking about the aliens. Yeah, yeah. And you don't get that until later when you yeah. realize it's aliens and you're like, oh, the air is fine. Yeah. I mean, they have the poison that comes out. They have out. the poison. Yeah. Yeah, but like the air itself is not Oh, no, no. It's poison. not It's not poisonous. It's just like, I love how complex they made the story because it could have just been like, oh my gosh, John Goodman was actually just really good the whole time in telling the truth mm-hmm. and there really is aliens. Mm-hmm. Or it could have been, no, he's lying. He's only kidnapping you. They made it both. Yeah, they did. Which is awesome. That's <laughs> such a so cool awesome. choice to do. So props to them for yeah. doing that. I just think that was like a very smart story choice. And the other reason why I like the story in certain points, and one of the parts is at the very beginning when she's first been caught and she's, you know, trying to figure everything out. He comes in and he's like, basically tells her, you know, nobody's looking for you. And he leaves. She gets the key for the handcuff and sharpens the crutch. Uh And I love how she's just standing up against the wall, just waiting for him. I love that And he just doesn't come. Because why would he? Yeah. You know? And so I love that because it's so real in a sense, you know? That's true. And in, in, in a normal movie, he'd like already be coming. Yeah, he'd already be no coming. Reason. Yeah. So she has to start the fire for him to come. And it's like, that's, that's, that's so smart. I didn't even think about that, but it is smart. It's, it's very, very smart, smart filmmaking. Yeah. Because they didn't do a lot that was just for the purpose of moving the story. No. Like a lot of it was like pretty r- real. Yeah. Even her going in the vent to fix the generator because that was the other thing I was kind of thinking about but he didn't know that she had carved help or that her earrings were there because I was like why would he send her up there if he knew that all that stuff was in there and she probably she almost didn't even see it so it was like but she was just trying to look outside you know just true see it and everything and then she just notices this little scratch on there yeah so it's just like little little little, things like that little thing it just felt intentional and mm-hmm. smart rather than mm-hmm. just like, oh, this happened. Yeah, I agree. You know, but yeah. Uh, so, so okay, the story. one thing okay. that connects, I wouldn't even say it connects Cloverfield and 10 Cloverfield Lane. Okay. So at the end of Cloverfield, I know you didn't see it, but I told you about I it. I went back and found it. Okay. I watched a YouTube video about 90 times until I found it. <laughs> It took me a really long time, Full satellite but I zoomed down. in on the YouTube on the video, <laughs> and I played it at 0.25 speed, there and I go. found it. Yep. So it's so quick. It took me probably 20 minutes to find it's, it. But. It's a little blink and you miss mm-hmm. a thing. Mm-hmm. He used to work with satellites. That's the only like connection I could maybe oh, my find. Goodness. Is that yeah? It's because a satellite it's crashed. A small connection. Yeah, and they're but, not the same aliens either. No, which I don't even know if they're the same at all. Yeah, like. It just seems like it's a totally different universe. Oh, complete, yeah, yeah. So that'd be like the only connection. It I is could interesting. Think of. I. Th- but let me ask you this real quick. Why do you think they called it Ten Cloverfield Lane? Do you think they did it for the name? Yes. And you think that that was the only? Re- they were just like, let's make something that's like 
completely different, but let's just throw the name on there so people go back and see it. So to my knowledge and understanding, because I did a little bit of research on it, Mm -hmm. this movie had been in the works for a while with John Goodman and Mary Elizabeth Weinstead. Um, Mm. And it was about them in an underground bunker, but that was it. So J.J. Abrams, what he wanted to do with Cloverfield was take small take small films, small budget stuff, oh, yeah, and yeah, kind of yeah. tie it into mm-hmm. it. So to my understanding, I think he found this movie and was like, yo, I really like this movie. I'd love to throw a fun twist into it. Let's brand it as Cloverfield so it does really well. So I don't know if the alien thing was like a last minute, not last minute, but just like a, it was just going to be an underground bunker thing and that's yeah. how it was going to end. Yeah. And then they added in the alien portion. Gotcha. Um, I'm not sure, but this was, I think his name is Dan Trachtenberg. Mm-hmm. This is his first film ever. Oh, cool. This is his debut director, directorial thing. Not a bad debut. No, not at <laughs> not all. Not bad at all. So I could be 100% wrong. People on the internet, if I am, please let me know. But that's my understanding is it wasn't a Cloverfield movie to begin with, and then it became one. That's cool. To basically promote a small film and just because he probably liked it. So Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So yes and no, mm-hmm. definitely name for yeah. the name. For namesake. Well, yeah. But then you have the Cloverfield Paradox and that's utter trash garbage. So I'm still gonna watch it. Yeah. You're gonna make me watch that again, aren't you? Maybe. That's so dumb. I've never seen it. <laughs> okay, you got After any more stories? It's just not good. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. <laughs> Should have watched it first. Um yeah, a couple of little one liner stuff that I thought was funny. Okay. Um when Emmett and <sighs> I don't remember her name, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, whatever her name is, when they're talking and he's like, they're talking about what, who bombed it or whatever. And he's like, yeah, like the South Koreans. And she's like, South Korea, you mean North Korea? And he's like, is that is the that crazy the, one? Is that the, is that the, is that the crazy one? <laughs> I that thought was that was funny. hilarious. Um, the fact that he had his bus ticket, also I forgot about that. He had his bus ticket in his wallet. Uh-huh. Why was that so sad? That was so sad, dude. Her name was Michelle. Michelle, that's what it was, Michelle. Oh, um, John Goodman saying, I know I seem like a sensible guy. <laughs> that was hilarious. Um, when he was talking about when she was going into the vent and he was like, you know, make sure to not have any problems because we can't come in to get you. Mm-hmm. So he's like, the she's like, well, what would I do? And he's just like, don't get stuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, he, okay, he wasn't well, wrong about yeah. it. <laughs> I really love the full circle of... When he talks about the using the um, crap, the the spray can the, that cools. Oh, the nitrogen. The nitrogen, yeah. yeah uh-huh. And he's like, yeah, we used to do that to our like our army general, and they, they would break off the handle. Oh, in the bathroom. Yeah, and that's what she uses to break yeah. off the lock. I just that's cool. That was really great. Um, yeah, that was those were my cool. Those are my story stuff. So. It is really good. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> please, 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 if you haven't seen this, yeah, watch seriously, this movie. watch it. It's so good. It's a really good movie. Okay, acting. I don't have any notes. Um, no. As far as I know, there are four actors plus Bradley Cooper. Yes. Correct? Yes. Like total. Total. Because there's a little, the lady. Plus, I guess, outside. plus whoever the voice on the radio is. There's five. There's oh, okay. Yeah. Five. There's six total people who... Whose voice is even heard in this entire movie? It's a sixth one. Well, wait. There's the three people. There's the three people. There's the Bradley crazy Cooper, lady. Crazy lady. Oh, and the radio. Bradley yeah, yeah, Cooper yeah. and the radio lady. Yeah. <laughs> There's three people you, four people you see in the whole movie. Yeah. And they all did really good. They all did great. John Goodman was. This was it's perfect. Probably one of the best things I've seen him in. Yeah. Like by far. Yeah. The other two actors were really good. Yeah. I don't really have like a lot of complaints with either of them. No. The the. Em- Emmett, was Emmett, his name? yep, Emmett. He, I'm trying to decide if he was like perfect because of for what he was supposed to be, yeah, or if he was just like kind of fine, but like at the same time, like he's just kind of fine of a person, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, like not overly emotional. No, he has that one kind of more emotional scene where he talks about his past. We're talking about the regrets, like they did really well. So it's pretty good. I mean, I, yeah. I, I don't have any complaints. No, and the lady, the crazy lady, the crazy she lady did really good, dude, oh for coming in and just being like the only other person in the whole movie. <laughs> she killed it, dude. She she got her her. 15 seconds of fame. <laughs> I don't know. What would you give it? I'd give it... I'm like debating. I would give a... I, 
I'm debating the 200. Uh huh. But at the same time, I just don't know if I feel. I'm going to give it a 195. That low? I mean, sorry, I'm not going to try to convince you otherwise. Who's who's just, taking off your be, five? It would just be Emmett. That's fair. But I don't know if he's five points. I'm going to give it a 199. Okay. I'm not going to give it quite a 200, but in a yeah. way I am. I think the 199 is because there wasn't a moment for him to really shine. Yeah. But I think if there was, he might have done good enough. He so might have. He might I'm have. giving it a 199 because that's as good as it could have been. If that I makes would, sense. Yeah. I want You're going to stick with like, 195? Make yeah. an assessment. Okay, one eighty five. Cool. Cool. I would cool. give it a four hundred just for John Goodman. Yes, he did wow, so good. He is just his incredible. looks and everything. He's, like, he it just was looks very creepy, intimidating, insane, but also like just he just he seemed like a typical insane person though, not like yeah, like it, a super like survivalist insane. crazy yeah. guy for sure. But then at the same time, he was, and after he kills Emmett, he just flips. Mm-hmm. And it's so good. He sh- when he shaves, dude. Oh, I know we talked about that, but so still, creepy. so creepy. It's so good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, really good acting. Just yeah. Really, yeah really okay. Good. And do you have anything else to say about it? No. I mean, we kind of have talked about it over we've, and over. We've talk, and over yeah, again. we pretty much talk about everything. John, Good- John Goodman. John Goodman is, is the reason why you see this movie. Star of this movie. Yeah. The chick is good too. She's really good. She's really good, but yeah. he is just a show stopper. Yeah. A thousand and, percent. And I've I know he's been in a lot of other stuff. I haven't seen him in a ton. Yeah, like the only thing that comes to my mind is Oh Brother War though. Or Emperor's New Groove. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's been yeah. a voice in a ton of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But like just like oh, Brother seeing War, that him, was so that's great. like the one that pops into my brain when it's like visualizing him. Have you seen Coyote Girls? Is that no. what it's called? <laughs> What is Coyote Girls? It's this really dumb, like, dancer movie. And he's in it. He's like the dad or something. My wife has watched it. And I have seen it not all the way through. Is it Coyote Coyote Ugly? Coyote Ugly, that's what it is, not Coyote Girls. He's in it? Yeah, he's he's like the dad or something. It's a romance musical? Yeah. (laughs) He, like, dances around one time or something. <laughs> Graced with a velvet voice, 21 year old Violet Sanford heads to New York to pursue her dream of becoming a songwriter, only to find her aspirations sidelined by the accolades and notoriety she receives at her day job as a barmaid at Coyote Ugly. There you go. Wow, that sounds amazing. Oh, dude, it's rough. <laughs> but it's pretty good. I haven't finished it, but it's pretty good. <laughs> wow. But yeah, so a lot of the stuff I've seen him in is funny. And so, 113 million at the box office. Dang. Dang, Coyote Ugly, you did it. Shazam barely beat that. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Shazam. Man, Coyote Ugly did better than Annihilation. <laughs> yeah, so did I, dude. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure Annihilation's in the same tax bracket I'm in. Oh, man. $43 million. That's funny. Oh, geez. Yeah, so it was really cool to see him in a more dramatic intense thriller type yeah. of thing because I've never really and seen he's him he's got it. the chops dude. for it, dude. He's so good. So good. Okay, score. Yeah. Um, I like the opening song. Uh-huh. And I like the trailer song that they play later on in the movie. Yeah. That's basically the music. Really? I don't, I, think, I don't I, think there's really anything else. No, there's a ton. Is there really? Yes. There's so much. It's really, it's really tense. Oh my gosh! I see. Okay, because I've been really bad at listening to the <laughs> the score of all of these movies yeah. we've been watching, and some of them I'll, I'll notice more than others. But I really tried to make it a point to really listen okay. to the music. I did not. Then it was really pretty good. Okay, like not like base level. Like this is what anybody would write for this. Like right. I thought it like during the tense scenes, very good. Obviously, I felt intense. So. That was probably a good amount of the music. Yeah, and maybe, I mean, sometimes the music can be so good that you don't notice it. And that's pretty much what it was. Like a suspenseful movie, a lot of times that's what it is. So, yeah, Yeah, I mean, I'm going to give it like a 180. Okay. It was a a very, well, that's a little high. I'm going to give it 178. Okay. Because it was very good. (laughs) But there's no, there's no, I know that's only two points. 180 is a little high. (laughs) But it's not something that I remember any of the songs. You know, but yeah. I do remember the feeling, which I think is good enough. For and me. all the alien stuff sounded really good. Yeah. All the sound effects were really cool. Mm-hmm. That's, the alien sound effects were really cool. They were really cool. I really like those. Uh, You're going based off of yeah a, a fake memory. I'm going to do 170. Cool. Yeah, because I, <laughs> I don't remember much. That's great. I, 171. Oh, 
Just because of the gunshot when he kills Emmett. Oh my goodness. Dude, it's just, that resonates with you. Yeah, it sticks with you forever. Okay. Vibe. Is this another 199 or is this a... <laughs> Hold on, let me replay the whole movie in my head real quick. This is 200 for me. Santa Claus. Santa Claus. <laughs> I mean, they barely touched me. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, goodness. I will say I really liked that this was a happy ending movie. Yeah. Because I did not see that coming. No. I for sure thought it was going to end like Cloverfield did. Oh, yeah. Where everybody dies. Yeah. Oh, man, is it <laughs> that, Honestly, it's, it's very interesting if it's 200 or 199 because for some reason, that's as far as our scale goes, uh-huh. that's the biggest difference. I know, it really is. Is that one point... <laughs> Between so, so, so good and perfection. perfection. Let that be a lesson to all of our listeners. The difference between being really, really good and perfect is, is 199 and 200. Yeah. It's 0.5%. Man. Oh, what is it? This is the one where- It's you, a 200. Okay. This is, I was going to say, this is the one where you'd use a lot of 199.5 or I know. It's a 200 because- I have to think about how I felt while I was watching the movie He's and I loved it great. the whole time. And you can just watch it again. Yeah. Yeah. A thousand percent. Oh yeah. Yeah, dude. That's a fun Not movie. a lot of 200 movies as far as vibe goes, but no. this is on that list now. Yeah. So much better than the first Cloverfield. <laughs> I mean, what did I get the first Cloverfield? I think it's like one of your lowest scoring other than the Grinch. I was like 915. No, it was 419 that I gave it. Woof. That's bad. Wow, was the Grinch even lower than that? The I think that's gr- your lowest. No, that's my lowest because the Grinch lowest. I gave a 573. <laughs> this one's not even batting 500, dude. Ooh. Okay. What do you think you gave it? 943. Okay. I'm going to think that I gave it a 958. Oh, okay. You said 943? 943. 953. Oh, okay. Dang, that's higher than I thought. Not bad. And what did I say? 950. You said 954. 954, 961. Oh, okay. Nice. 955 and 961. And that's about what we gave it out of 10. Yeah. Ish. I said 9.4. Yeah, you I said 9.5. You were pretty much spot on on yeah. yours. Huh. Um, you know anything about the box office? No, I don't. What's your guess? What was Cloverfield? 170 something? Let's see. 172. 172 million. I don't think it did as good as Cloverfield. I don't think so either because I hadn't heard of this movie and I had heard of Cloverfield. One and that's how I base everything. <laughs> on 121. 121. You know what? I always go too high. I'm going to go too low this time. Oh. I'm going to say it was 108 million. Oh, okay. Million 121 dollars. and 108. 120. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me write this down. 121. If it only made 108, that's kind of sad. Yeah, well, maybe but- not. What is its budget? Because I bet it's, it's had it had to have had a low, a super low budget, a pretty low. I mean, the ending scene was quite a bit of stuff, but like I can't imagine it'd be much more than like thirty or forty million. Oh, what did you get it again? One hundred and ten. Hey, dude. I, you know what? I'm gonna guess low from now on. That was really close. for the rest of my life. Dang, seventy two domestic and thirty eight international. What was the budget? Let's see. It had to have made money. Oh yeah, there's no way it had a hundred and. It says million dollar thirteen budget. to fifteen million. Really? Yeah. That's low. That's How did only, they make that movie for that much? Dude, nobody was sixteen million. Dude, that's really low for that. Because here's the thing: if they didn't have the VFX at the end, I totally get how they make it on that budget. But the aliens and stuff. Yeah, how would they do that? I don't know. I mean, look four really or five good. actors. Yeah. So not four, you don't four have to pay actors. People. Bradley Cooper probably did that for free. Oh yeah. Just as a as a fun. The radio line. lady was probably like a set designer or something. They always yeah. do that. They always just like pull somebody from the crew and they're like, "Will you just like record a couple lines? I'll give you fifty mm-hmm. bucks or something like that." I hadn't heard of Emmett before this movie. Mary Elizabeth Weinstead was just starting to become. What What is she in? Um, crap. Um, yeah, she because she she looks so familiar, but yeah, I couldn't tell, she's, tell you what she's in. She's in a few things. Oh, she's in Sky High. Yeah. You remember Sky High? <laughs> Sky High. Oh, she's in Birds of Prey, Scott, Scott Pilgr- Pilgrim versus Birds the, the world. world, The Thing, Final Destination 3. That's what I was thinking, Final Destination 3. Is that really what you're thinking? Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Gemini Man. Okay, so I've seen her in stuff. Yeah. Um, nothing Jack- that I'm like super, super familiar with personally, but like and I've seen some of these John movies. Goodman is very popular, but at the same time, he's not a huge name. 
I think he is a huge name, but I think he, it's more of that he's a huge name and people could not really pinpoint him in things. That's what, because for me, yeah. it really is just like this, oh brother, where art thou? And Emperor's New Groove, that's where I can, I can like mm-hmm. put him in, mm-hmm. but like I know he's in other stuff. Yeah, Coyote Ugly. Coyote Ugly. <laughs> he's in, he's the guy in Roseanne? Yeah, you didn't know that? I guess I didn't. I yeah. mean, I, they look the same. Yeah. So <laughs> I figured it should be him. <laughs> Oh, he's in The Big Lebowski, which I've always wanted to watch, which I've never seen. Mm. Flintstones, Monsters University. Oh, he's Sully, isn't he? Yeah, he's Sully. Yeah, so Monsters, Inc. Um, yeah, but again, like, he's in a lot of stuff. And he is in a lot of 80s and 90s stuff that mm-hmm. I just haven't seen. Right. And so that's what I was saying, like, because I don't think he'd been in anything for a while when he went into 10 Cloverfield Lane. He's in B-Movie, which... Dude, I still think, oh, okay, we're going to watch B-Movie I and know. I just want you to give it a chance because okay. it's stupid, but it is so funny. Okay, I'll it give it a got chance. So, freaking Patrick Warburton, come on, honey, you're about to eat it. You know, playing tennis. <laughs> he's a bug. Uh, it's so funny. He's, a, he's in Cars? Who is he in Cars? He's in Cars? Who is John Goodman in Cars? John Goodman is, has been in something like literally every year since like 84. Two or something <laughs> like like for real for real. That's insane. Um, but bum, 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 I might not find it. He might be something like so small. Yeah, probably cars. is. Oh well, he's he's solely in because remember at the end of Cars, they rewatch the Pixar movies because it's like Woody, you are a oh, toy yeah. car. Oh, that is probably yeah. what it is. Yeah. So it's just oh, the, that makes sense. Do you know Michael Keaton is Chick Hicks? <laughs> I just found that out. That's Wait. the most shocking news of my whole life. What? My wife could tell me she like, is pregnant and I would still be more shocked like by this. Like Vulture Michael Keaton? <laughs> yes, like the Batman. Michael Keaton? <laughs> what? Is That's Chick, Chick Hicks, Hicks, dude. Cars just reached another level for me. Chick freaking Hicks. I already love that movie, but my goodness. Wow, that is crazy. <laughs> Ka-chow. Tony Shalhoub is Luigi. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't look at the cast of animated movies right now or my brain will explode. <laughs> oh, man. My goodness. You learn something new every day. Michael Keane. Wow, that's crazy. I did not realize that he was Chick Hicks. Hmm. Well, I am plenty surprised. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Anything you wanted to say at all? I've said this almost at the end of almost every single podcast episode, but uh, go watch this movie. Yeah, I know. I don't know how many times I've said I don't that. Know, but I don't even know how many people actually there's watch a few. This there's honestly, too. like I'm looking at the list of movies we re- we've reviewed and shows, and there's only like two or three that I'm like, you don't need to watch that. Mm-hmm. Cloverfield, eh, it's fine. The Mandalorian. You don't need to watch it. <laughs> Mandalorian 3, you don't need to watch. <laughs> then The Grinch for you, probably. The Grinch can go die in a hole. <laughs> Uh, Ant Man three. The more I think about it, you don't oh, need to go yeah. watch. No, you don't need to see that. Even you know what? Can I say something? Okay. And maybe it's the mood I'm in right now. Okay. The more I think about The Last of Us, the more I'm like, whatever. Oh, see, the more I think about The Last of Us, the more I love really? it. Oh, know? that's good. That's good. Yeah. I, it's like I want people to enjoy it, but like I think back on it, and I'm like, I was just mostly disappointed. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, but whatever. I think you're what also I, a little. What angry did I give at, Last of Us? I gave it a nine hundred. I think you're a little too. angry at Pedro Pascal right now, though. So. No, I'm not even mad at him, okay. honestly. I mean, he's a diva, but he's an actor. I can't blame him. He was born like that, you know? <laughs> he's still fun. To, he's still fun to watch, though. He's like fun in interviews and stuff. Like, oh, I like him. Like, his like hot surface ones. level. Yeah, his hot ones is great. So I love him surface level. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't care too much about him. We still need to watch stuff. The Unbearable Way of Massive Talent. We do. I would love to I would love to, love to, to see that, that. yeah. The, me- the amount of memes, the oh amount of videos God. that Courtney has showed me with the, the scene with, with oh Nick Cage my and my me favorite. And my wife, like, ritually every night watched, like, so many of those. Yeah, oh, yeah, same. There's so, so many of them. My favorite one was, was like, Nick Cage's some unsuspecting husband who thinks they're, like, going to the grocery store and then Pedro Pascal is is the wife driving them to Disneyland. <laughs> like, so good. Oh, Do you have man. anything else to say about this? No. Like like Sam said, please watch it. It's very good. It's a very good suspense movie. Yeah. Like very, very, very good suspense movie. Yeah. Top of my top of my suspense movie list mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if you would like to, or if you wouldn't like to, please subscribe yeah, to no, the podcast. Yeah, no, it's not about if you like to. Just do it. Just do it. You know, a young a young wizard once said, um, I th- believe the name was Shia LaBeouf. Um, 
how, how do I pronounce it? Just do it. I think is how he said it. I think it. Shia LaBeouf was actually the one who said, "Do or do not." There is no try. That's what it was. I'm yeah. sorry. I was thinking of somebody totally different. I was thinking yes. of Yoda when he quotes, "Don't just do it." Yeah, when Yoda stands up in front of the green screen and says, "Just do it." <laughs> Speaking of Yoda, everybody, next week we have a very special episode. It is going to come out a day early. Yep. On May the 4th, be with you. Yay. Next Thursday, we're reviewing my favorite movie of all time, Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Is it really? I've got, is it your favorite movie of all time? It is my favorite okay. movie of all okay. time. Okay. Uh, that, again, it's no, no, not no, to it's say fine. that it's, it's yeah, the yeah, best no, movie no, of all time. It's fine. It's my favorite movie of all time. We all have opinions. And, some are right, some are wrong. And <laughs> Kill Craig, <laughs> he will not be in that episode because he'll be dead. <laughs> and I've got some fun stories. I've got pictures that I'll share on Instagram of a little tiny me going to see Revenge of the Sith. Oh, and so, so cute. Um, <laughs> yeah, follow us on Instagram if you want to catch all the all the BTS for that kind of stuff. But yeah, um, yeah so subscribe, rate. We Review. need ratings, people. Review. Yeah. Just like interact. Yeah. Somehow. You know, if you're enjoying the content, like do something and share it, you know? Share we it. We don't tell people to do it, but just... Share if you have it. a friend who likes movies, yeah. share this podcast share with them. Share the podcast. Yeah. Say, hey, let's watch this movie that I listened to from these really cool people, this podcast. I've been putting like little posts on YouTube, so vote on those. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're fun little stuff. Go to all of our like social medias and YouTubes and links and stuff because there's like hidden gems everywhere. Yeah. And on the Discord. Some are uncut gems, but they're usually pretty hidden. <laughs> Some of them are cut <laughs> gems, which are way more valuable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's it. Craig, thank you to our new supporter. He goes by the name Kevin. You may or may not know him as my brother. He's pretty cool. He always told me that I was adopted uh, growing up. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever he had He to wouldn't be your brother if he didn't. <laughs> and whenever he had to take the trash out... He always said that he couldn't because I was too heavy. <laughs> <laughs> that is an incredible oh. brother. Kevin, I love you. Thanks for all the awesome memories growing up. I love all the 1 and 2 a.m. McDonald's and Carl's Jr. runs. And then we played video games. You were awesome. Thank you for supporting the channel. Okay, that's it. <sighs> this has been another episode of radioactive electrons are conductive to ions or neutrons. Holy cow, science boy. <laughs> Tesla's imprint marketed egos. <laughs> that was your most intelligent one you've said the entire podcast. Holy big words. Craig Knock, everybody. Please, a round of applause for that big brain that guy has. He got a bad, bad case of GBS. Yeah. Giant brain syndrome. I was going to say, I don't know what that is. That's a disease I made up for people who are really smart. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's me. Catch, Love catch you next you week all. at GBS. Catch you next week. Me. For Star Wars. Yeah. Yoda. Woo. Hey. Bye. Bye.